Yo, what's up guys? We are back with another video. We're gonna be comparing all the classes in EverQuest on TLP servers. We're gonna talk about which ones are the strength, the strongest, which ones are the weakest, which ones are kind of in the middle, and how they all uh, compare um, on a per expansion basis. And we're just gonna start alphabetically, which means we're gonna start with the Bard, and we're gonna work our way all the way down to the wizard. And this is gonna be rated in a tier system, starting S will be the best, and we're gonna go all the way down to D for the worst. And you can see at the top here, I have every expansion lined up. All right, so first off, we have the Bard class, and I have these guys starting off in the B tier, and eventually they're gonna work their way up into the A tier. Now, the reason why I have them starting in B tier is because they don't get a uh, fade until Planes of Power, and they also don't get their haste clicky until Planes of Power either. So, um, some of the benefits of a bard is they're basically they're box lords. I mean, everyone's boxing a bard. They're really, really easy to box. All you really got to do is set melody and auto follow them on your team, and it's going to make your whole team stronger. Uh, they also have tracking. Um, they can pull if you need them to pull, and they also have really, really, like I said, they have really good group songs. Now, the reason they're not any higher than where they're at, I don't have them in S tier. Some people might say, well, they're S tier. Everyone wants a bard all the time. Well, if you're trying to solo with a bard, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, they just kill really slowly in general and they have received a lot of nerfs over the years to their soloing ability so really they shine nowadays strongest in group and if you're trying to main a bard um, a lot of the times people don't like to main them just because they're like most effective really as a box so if you main one it might be really boring but if you do main one you're going to pretty much be pulling all the time people are always going to expect you to pull so if you do like pulling this will be a good main for you but if you don't like pulling i would not recommend uh, trying to main a bard. All right, up next we have Beast Lords, and I pretty much put Beast Lords at B tier all the way across. Um, they don't come out till Lucklin, but they're really not like the best class, but they're also not the worst class either. They're pretty just a, they're just a solid class in general. They're versatile. They can do a lot of different things. They can solo. They're okay in groups. They have good raid buffs. Um, they have they can slow. They can heal, and they can just do a lot of different. Um, weaknesses that a group might have. So um, the slow in particular is really nice to have. Any class that can um, deal additional damage and slow is really nice. So if uh, you're looking for a like a class that's decent with soloing, but you don't want to do like a uh, like a pure melee class, this is like a really good one for you. And also uh, some of the some of the cons of them is they're not as strong as other melee, so you're just not going to be putting out. The raw DPS that like a monk or rogue would be doing, but um, they're still pretty good. And also, cat boys are really weird. So if you're a cat boy, um, that's a con as well. All right, moving on to the raging alcoholics, the berserkers. We have um, I have them both in B tier. Now they are top tier raid DPS. As soon as they come out and you get a good raid weapon, they can put out tons of damage. And their epic 2.0 in particular is ridiculously good. Um, the reason I put them down in B tier though is because they really can't solo anything. They're just like a They're a glass cannon basically and they don't have a lot of defensive utility and they don't have any utility really in general So I would say overall it's a B tier class and if you're looking to play a berserker You really just want to do lots of damage in a group or you want to do lots of damage on a raid Clerics are S tier throughout the entire game. It doesn't matter what expansion you're talking about they have the best heals, they have the best reses, they have the best HP buffs. People are always looking for a cleric in the group, and they can actually put out some pretty decent damage in a group scenario as well. Especially in the early game, they have some, uh, the magic direct damage and the undead direct damage spells they have are pretty good. They even have an undead dot as well. Um, they're loyal waifus, and really the only con to a cleric is their poor soloers, but if you play a cleric, you're really not gonna be soloing. But uh, cleric in summary, S tier throughout the entire game. Druid, so this is kind of a tricky one. Um, in Classic and Kunark, they're exceptionally helpful to have around because they can port. Um, they're also really good power levelers with their damage shield, their regen, um, their HP buff, and Sal, and things like that. And after Kunark and Velius, they start to drop off a little bit. So you'll see I have them like marked in the A tier over here. And I kind of have them down just a little bit in Velius down to the B tier because they're still effective but they're not as good as they were in like classic and they don't really get any huge spell upgrades during um, Vilius that makes them warranted to stay in the A tier. And after that, I got them in, in Luckland, I got them BC at the BC tier. And then after that, 
I have them in the D tier for really all the way through gate, Gates of Discord. And then I bumped them up a little bit to the C tier again in Omens of War because they get the Epic 2.0 in Omens of War and the clicky for that in era um, increases spell damage on a mob for your group for like a certain, like a minute or something like that. So it's actually a really good Epic 2.0 clicky. So I moved them up a little bit there just for that clicky alone. And they start to get like some of their spells back a little bit, but they're still one of the weaker classes overall. And um, some of the nice things about Druids is they can solo early in the early game. And that kind of, again, that kind of weans off as the expansions go. It gets harder and harder to solo the more expansions that come out um, for a Druid. So their spells just don't keep up with what you need to solo effectively. And they're, but they're really, they have a, like a wide range of utility, but they're really not the best at anything. Like they have tracking and they have a couple uh, unique debuffs. I think it's like resist uh, debuffs and what do they have? Like increased spell damage debuff, I think they get eventually too. But uh, these things aren't enough to really make up for, um, they're kind of, they need a niche, I think, is what really what druids don't have. They don't have like an actual niche. They're kind of just like uh, jack of all trades, master of none. And another problem that they have on raids is they don't have like a, uh, a way to reduce aggro when they're casting on mobs and stuff. And if they do get aggro, they wear leather, so they die pretty quick. So it's pretty easy to die on a raid if you like over aggro something. And also their HP buff kind of gets overshadowed by clerics HP buffs in most cases. Now the Druid one is a protection of the nine or something like that. Um, it has some mana regen on it, so it's a little bit better for casters, but a lot of times people just don't want to put the effort in to get a druid buff and then get the symbol that stacks with it from clerics. Usually if people just have, what I've seen anyway, people just get virtue and that's it. They're too lazy to like sit around and get this other, uh, the druid buff as well. So uh, druids are kind of rare for that reason once you start hitting the later expansions like in Planes of Power and things like that. And then you're going to see them more often uh, in early TLP. So um, it's a good box to have around pretty much all the time, but me personally, I don't think it would be a lot of fun uh, to main one uh, once you get past the first couple expansions. And when I say they're a good box, I don't mean like actively having a druid in your group. They're probably not really a, like a great active um, class to be boxing. There's other ones that are far more effective. Um, but it's nice to have a druid on one of your accounts in case you need its buffs or its ports. Um, it is really nice to have those if you're power leveling or you just need to be ported somewhere. All right, next we got Enchanter. Everybody wants to be an Enchanter. Everybody wants to be around an Enchanter. Everybody loves Enchanters. I have them in S tier all the way through Eldon. Uh, their charm pets are just unmatched. They can be a group tank. They can haste. They have tons of hit points. They're pretty much a one-man group outside of healing. So if you just grab a cleric, the two of you can be a group, and everything else is just a bonus. Now, Gates of Discord can maybe be a B, or it can maybe be like A, B. Now, the reason I lowered a little bit is because the there's less mobs overall that you can charm in D Gates of Discord, but there are still zones where you can like uh, like Tipton Vex, you can charm in there, you can still just plow right through it. So I'm not super familiar with all the charm abilities, but I did basically rate this based on the effectiveness of charm pets. So I'll put A, B here for now. And then C tier, there's even less mobs that you can charm in Omens of War and the, the hit points of the mobs goes way up. So the overall effectiveness of the uh, charming goes down as well. So the highest level you can charm outside of the ancient spell, I believe is level 67. So that pretty much cuts, cuts out Rift Seeker Sanctum and it cuts out uh, M MPG, uh, Mermite Proving Grounds. So um, they, do, they do also have CC, they can CC really well. They're the best CC class in the game. So if you need CC, they're still really good for that. They have mana regen buffs. They have haste buffs and they're just really good overall for that. All right, mages. So mages are S tier from classic to Scars of Ilias. Basically no questions asked. Their pets are really, really strong. Uh, the 1.0 epic is ridiculously good. That's basically gonna carry you all the way until Planes of Power. Um, I lowered them a little bit in Shadows of Luckland just because the, the mage epic is not quite as good as it was in the first two expansions, just because the bombs are a little bit harder, but they're still right up there. In the very top classes and so i just put them in a for that and then once planes of power comes out the pets get a substantial nerf overall so i just lowered them down to a c just because of the pet nerf um, the planes of power pets are stronger than the 1.0 epic but in comparison to their own their given era they're not as strong so pets across the board just kind of aren't as good uh, once planes of power comes out 
And you're also gonna rely a lot on debuffs as a mage. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to go all out on a raid boss unless it's fully debuffed. So um, if you have a guild that doesn't keep the resist debuffs off, you're going to have a problem there. Now, mages do have Milo, but you might end up being the person that's always casting Milo. So that's going to lower your damage indirectly as well. Um, so yeah, just between... And then also mitigation of the mighty. Um, you got to watch your aggro a lot as a mage because um, pets are really sensitive uh, to mitigation of the mighty aggro in addition to your damage now you can still pump out some decent damage on raid targets in like a good raid situation so but not like complete crap but there's just other classes that are easier and they do more damage for less work so people you're going to see a lot less mages once like planes of power comes out all right i know all you monkey boys waiting for me to cover the monk class sitting on the edge of your chair drooling well here we are so uh for classic we got them at a tier just because they don't have their epic and they're just s tier basically for the rest of the game uh, they're easy skill, no life. Uh, they do a lot of damage for low aggro. And if you do get aggro, you just FD, boom, you don't have aggro anymore. Um, you got mend if you if you take aggro and you just need to heal yourself instantly. All you need is haste and a joystick and you're number one on the charts. Uh, really the only downside to a monk is if you do play one, uh, you're a beta. Necromancers is highly subjective. It depends on what kind of group you're in and what kind of role you're playing in that group. You could potentially be the most useful person in the group, but if you're in um, some other group, you might be completely useless and you might be better off soloing. So it really just depends on your role. Um, if your group kills really, really fast, you're not gonna be able to keep up with the killing pace because Necros generally have to get their dots rolling in order to do a lot of damage. So at that point, you're gonna wanna convert yourself over into like a support utility type class for your group. You can, uh, you can slow undead mobs, you can charm undead mobs, you can give your group mana, you can even heal your tank. Uh, you have Root, um, at, at the earlier expansions, you have a Mez that will work on any target below level, I think it's 55. Um, but as you go on in expansions, a lot of these tools become less useful over time and other classes just get more damage, you can kill faster and faster. And Necromancers don't scale as well in their group game as the other classes do. So um, once you start hitting like Planes of Power, I kind of lowered it down to a C level here um, for Planes of Power because of that. Now, with that being said, you can always solo in any expansions. Necros are awesome sol solos, and they're also really good at killing, um, doing high damage on mobs where you actually have enough time to ramp up all your dots. So basically on raid bosses, where if you can land your spells, uh, they do, they're going to do lots of damage and you're going to be among the top um, parse, one of the top parsers in your guild um, on raid bosses alone. So as long as you don't pull aggro, obviously. So. And then, uh, so that's kind of the story from Planes of Power to Gates of Discord. And really, Gates of Discord could probably be like a, like a BC. Um, because they get an AA that will start to increase their dot damage a bit. You can crit. And that's going to make a huge difference in your DPS. And same with Omens of War. I put them up to a B because you get the 2.0 epic, which will further increase your chance to crit on your dots. So um, they get um, a little bit stronger again as time goes on. And eventually, they're actually really good again, especially like on raids. Uh, but the two biggest things to know on a Necro is the really high effort to get the most out of the class. And that's why a lot of people will just pick other classes because Necromancers just require too much work and a lot of people don't want to sit there and do the dot, dot rotation thing. And also because they're higher effort to play, people don't often box them once you get into the later expansions because there's just other classes that are just way more effective to box. So our first tank is Paladins. We start off in the B tier. Um, really, Paladins are strong tanks pretty much through the entire game. All, all the tanks are good, uh, but Paladins in particular, um, I don't have them I'm at, the, at A or above because they don't have the mana pool to keep up with like chain casting their spells early in the game. And also, they can still hold really good aggro, even in early aggro, early eras. But in Shadows of Luckland, I think it is, they get Seize and Desist, and those are two other aggro spells that are really going to help you out. So you really just get start to get overpowered amounts of aggro once Shadows of Luckland comes out. I think it's Luckland. Now, I'm not a Paladin expert. I don't claim to know everything, but uh, I think it's Shadows of Luckland. And then Planes of Power, you get even more gear, and you can really get strong. You can do a lot of different things. And you also get a fixed duration root when Planes of Power comes out, so that's really nice too. And uh, they have great aggro control. They can buff people. They can heal the group. Uh, they have a DA hammer proc that they can get. And you can be a really good ramp tank. And they can main tank stuff too, but they're also the best ramp tank. So they just get better and better as time goes on. 
Now, some of the cons for them is people find them boring to play because the DPS is so low. So you're not really going to be soloing a whole lot as a Paladin. Um, they do get a undead proc though, which is nice, and that will actually get really strong like later, later in the game. Um, but um, it's only mediocre here, probably in these eras. And also, they're not as box friendly as a warrior. You can't just like set it and forget it type thing. Like a uh, like a warrior, you just turn on an attack and you start procking. Uh, you start procking. You can hold aggro. Paladins, you got to be a little bit more interactive. You got to like cast your st stuns and things like that. So they're not quite as box friendly. And also, um, they have a lower social status than warriors as well. Like they're just not as cool. People aren't going to like you as much. They're not going to think you're as strong, and they're just like on a level lower. Uh, then warriors you're just not going to be as famous and so if you're going to play a paladin that's just going to be have something that you're going to have to accept shadow knights are really good too i got an s tier in classic just because the way they can hold aggro is so effective in classic and warriors don't quite have the they don't have the aggro ability quite yet in classic to be a top tier tank and um, so shadow knights are typically going to be your best tank in uh in classic along with paladins and they get this, you know, they just get a little bit less effective, I would say, in Ruins of Kunark and uh, Scars of Vilius. They could probably still be S tier here. I don't know. It's just kind of like whatever, you know, it depends on what you're doing and what, if you're raiding, if you're grouping, if you're soloing. So they're still just really, really strong pretty much all the way through the game. Uh, they don't really change a whole lot. And eventually they do get surpassed as a top tier tank by warriors but they're still really really good like you make a shadow knight you're gonna have a good time if you if your goal is to tank so they have great out control they have feigned death but the only uh things that are really not that great about them is they don't really have any cc and their heals are self only whereas a paladin you can actually heal your entire group and uh again they're not as box friendly as a warrior and again they're just not as cool as a warrior like if you're a Shadow Knight, like, people are just going to think you're kind of lame. And they're like, dude, why aren't you a warrior? Like, why'd you make a Shadow Knight? Uh, you know, and they might send you, like, some hate towels, like, the in-game mail. And maybe they'll just, like, spit on you as they walk by you. So, um, you know, if, if I recommend if uh, you don't want to be quite as cool as a warrior, you can make a Shadow Knight. But you just have to be okay with, like, uh, um, receiving some hate from people in-game sometimes. Shamans are just a solid class pretty much all the time and their role doesn't change a whole lot they don't really get any particularly stronger or any particularly weaker in any given expansion they pretty scale pretty evenly so i guess in terms of class design i guess that's good it's less interesting but it's good um, the problem with shamans is they do just get overshadowed um, enchanters are generally going to be um, especially if they can get strong pets they're going to overshadow shamans damage clerics are going to overshadow uh, shamans healing and enchanters also at, um, provide overall more versatile buffs than shamans do. They can provide a better haste, and they have a slow that's almost comparable, and they provide mana regen. Shamans don't provide any group mana regen, so they just kind of get overshadowed by you know a couple classes. But they are good uh, if you need to fill one of the roles that shamans can do. They're really good for that, and you know they're not weak, but they're not super strong either. Um, they have high aggro dots, so like they, they're going to burn through mana really fast on single target dotting. But they can pull out a lot of damage on a raid boss, but you're going to have to be careful with aggro because they don't really have any way to control an aggro if you're just doing too much damage at once. But they're also really good for soloing. Um, they're, they're better than enchanters for soloing because they can heal. They're not going to kill as fast probably, but they are more effective overall as a soloing class. So if you can't find a group for whatever reason in Shaman, you got a pretty good uh, option for soloing as well. People like the meme on them, but rangers are really strong and they can perform um, well in a lot of different areas. They have good melee damage if you have good weapons. Uh, once Shadows of Luckland hits and you get Endless Quiver, they have a really good range damage option as well. And it's all physical. And also you have some spells in your bank. You can do a little bit of direct damage, a little bit of dot. It's not really like uh, anything crazy, but you do have that there. Um, they also could be light tanks if you have good gear. They have the ability to taunt mobs, which is their only, they're the only non-actual plate tank that has the, uh, the taunt ability. They have the best tracking in the game. And it really, even with the, uh, with the bows, once you get endless quiver, you can do AFK damage. You're not going to do the best damage in the world, but you can just set them up as a box and have like a couple rangers AFK shooting and they're going to do okay damage. And also they can do backup heals, they have root, and they just have a lot of different tools um, at their disposal. So they're pretty much just a solid class 
um, all the time. Really the only downside I can think of to a Ranger is that they can be gear dependent. Um, so you're not gonna wanna be trying to tank stuff if you have no gear or you don't have any AAs or something like that. Moving on to Rogues, the pros. They are sneaky boys. They can sneak, they get Strat of Stealth and Planes of Power. They are a lot smarter than monks on average. Uh, they get their, they get better as their weapon choices improve. So basically in classic, all the weapons really suck. So they're basically D tier. Uh, they're gonna be probably the lowest damage class in classic, but as they, uh, Runes of Kunark, they get their 1.0 epic, so they get a little bit better. In Scars of Velius, they get even better weapons. And it just keeps going and going and going until you hit Omens of War. You get that 2.0 epic and you're just crushing out the DPS. It is ridiculous how much damage that does. One of the cons is the lack of weapons in the early expansions. Um, you don't have a whole lot of utility, but Shroud of Self is really nice. Being able to pick lock doors is really nice as well. And also your damage is going to scale with the IQ of your tank. Warriors. I know a lot of you guys are waiting on this one. So we have them starting off in the C tier. They are respectable tanks in classic. However, the aggro generation is not quite there yet. So I put them at a C. They're not the best, but they're not horrible either. Um, once Rune or Runes of Kunar comes out, you get two things. You get the defensive disciplines, and also you're gonna get your Warrior 1.0 epics, and you're gonna have like some better uh, aggro generation options in general. So I got them at a B minus for Kunar. Scars of Elias, it gets even a little bit better. You're gonna have even more proc weapons to choose from. Uh, Shadows of Luckland, the same thing. The weapons just get better and better. Aggro gets better and better. Planes of Power, it's game over. Warriors are ridiculously good. You're going to start getting heroic decks and playing of time. You get Dark Blade of the Warlord. And as long as you're geared, you're, just gonna be, you're, you're a top tier tank at this point. Uh, Lost Dungeons of Nor Norath, same thing. You get your aggro proc augments, which is really going to increase your aggro even further. Gates of Discord, it gets even crazier. You get uh, AA that will further increase your uh, chance to proc and both in Eldon and Gates of Discord, you're gonna get more heroic decks as well. So you're just gonna be procking and procking and procking. In Omens of War, you get your 2.0 epic and you're just, if you're geared, you're just gonna be like a ridiculous tanking god. They just get so good, it gets insane. So the pros of a warrior, um, you're gonna be the best raid tank out of all the tank classes because you have this really good defensive disciplines. And really, you're just gonna be super alpha over your Paladin and Shadow Knight counterparts. Everybody's gonna want your phone number. They're gonna send you gift cards. You're gonna get all the ladies. And if they see like a Paladin or a Shadow Knight near you, they're not even gonna pay any attention to them. And especially if you're like a Wood Elf, you're like the Omega Alpha, people will literally like bow to you as you walk by and everyone's gonna want your autograph and you're just gonna have so much respect. It's gonna be ridiculous. So you have to make sure that you stay modest once you're like the top dog on your server in the game and all of Daybreak. The biggest con to Warriors is their gear reliant. So if you don't have any gear, you're not gonna get any of that. So make sure you stay geared up as you progress through the expansions or you're gonna suck. Finally, we are on Wizards. Uh, we got I got them in the A tier for the first four expansions and I got them in the B tier for the second four expansions. Um, they're never really like bad at any point. Um, the first four expansions, they're really good in the group game because they just deal so much damage and their spells are really mana efficient. And also on raids, they're really good because they can do fire, ice, and magic. So you can kind of pick which uh, school is best for the raid target. Um, you're going to be able to do, you know, pretty good damage pretty much anywhere. Um, after Shadows of Luckland, though, you're going to have some issues probably with resist, especially like in, on playing the time bosses and um, some of the Lost Dungeons and Nor Norath missions, like on the trash and things like that. Um, it's just you're gonna get you're gonna see more resist so they kind of just go down a tier based on that And also an issue with wizards too is you got to really watch your aggro on a wizard Especially if your tank isn't a high aggro tank um, Your your gear your your damage is actually going to depend on how much aggro your tank is generating for melee Generally, they don't have to worry about this nearly as much as a wizard does wizard one wrong nuke You're gonna get summoned and you're gonna get killed by that raid boss So you gotta be real careful on managing your aggro to get the most out of your class and also, when you do die, you're going to have really high downtime as a wizard because it just takes a long time to med up. And that's really going to become an issue like the bigger your mana pool gets. And But overall, wizards are a solid class. They do get ports, which is just useful all the time. And they're really fun to play as well. So you got to put that effort in. It's not going to be like an easy cakewalk to get high on the parts. But uh, they're a really satisfying class to play, and they're a lot of fun.
So that's everything. I hope this was helpful. Please make sure to like the video if it was and please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.